You could say in 2014, the M&A markets have been going bananas with big deal after big deal every week. And now this week, we can say the M&A markets are literally going bananas with a contested transaction at the iconic company Chiquita. With me, James Fontella Khan of the Lex Column. James, you've been covering this story. Before we get into the contested transactions at Chiquita, tell us a little bit about the company and what's, what's so uh, exciting about it. Well, so you, you said it. Chiquita is an iconic brand. You know, it's known for its bananas. And not only, I mean, it has other fruits. But um, it's, it's been going through a tough time. I mean, uh, the, the b bananas are the most uh, consumed fruits uh, in the world. Uh, yet yeah, there's uh, these companies, and there's not only Chiquita, but you've got uh, Fafis, you've got Dole, you've got Del Monte, are all under a lot of pressure, competitive pressure from big supermarkets who are squeezing them on, on prices, like forcing them to lower prices. And on the other hand, a lot of the big uh, retailers are directly going to, um, to the big farmers and buying directly bananas from them, which means that you know, the middleman, which mm -hmm. is what Chiquita is at the end of the day, is, is getting kind of hit from, from various points. And so tell us about this transaction they uh, struck a couple of months ago. Well, they had a deal, which was a merger of equals, a so-called merger of, of equals uh, with Fafis, which who's a um, European uh, rival of Chiquita. The idea was that they could build uh, strong synergies. Uh, and I mean, Chiquita is a much bigger than, uh, than Fafis. Uh, which is, as I said, predominantly based in Europe, but it has a very good balance sheet, whereas Chiquita is highly indebted. It's, very, it's a very leveraged company. Mm -hmm. So they, they figured out that they could split it in half and like, kind of create a new entity where they both had 50% each. Uh, however, uh, in fairness, I mean, both shareholders in both companies didn't show great enthusiasm for the deal. And, uh, and for example, Chiquita's share price went down quite substantially after the deal. Right. And so this week, someone is uh, swept in to make a, a counter bid for Chiquita. So tell us about this latest transaction. Well, we have two of Brazil's richest families gate crashing the merger. Uh, and it happens, this is kind of quite important, it just happened two weeks after a US court uh, basically um, removed any possible charges against uh, uh, Chiquita over accusations that he had been supporting uh, right-wing rebel groups in, in Colombia. So once that they were cleared of this, uh, uh, this Brazilian family, uh, one is a Cutrale, which is a big um, agribusiness, which focuses on orange uh, juices, and Sagra, which is an investment fund, again from Brazil, controlled by, again, a very uh, a billionaire family in, in Brazil. They got together and decided to, to make a move on what they think is an attractive and fairly cheap, uh, glorious brand. Yeah, and so they're offering a big premium for Chiquita, so it seems like it would be attractive for Chiquita shareholders to take this deal rather than the risk of a merger of equals. Absolutely. I mean, at, thir at the 30%, the 30 uh, premium, uh, the share prices were at $10, at $10 on, uh, in before the deal was, in, uh, the, the software was announced, and minutes later it rallied, and now is kind of at $13, which is more or less where the, the, the Brazilian duo is, is making an offer. And so finally, what's the risk for this Brazilian group paying a big premium for Chiquita? Uh, obviously, the shareholders of Chiquita will be cashed out, but this Brazilian group is going to uh, take, it seems like, a big risk paying a big price for uh, a troubled company, perhaps. Well, face law lawyers are still kind of lobbying that there is an argument for, you know, the two companies to merge. Uh, they think, you know, the synergy argument will win. But mm -hmm. We see that as being kind of difficult. Uh, th the cash <laughs> is, is quite interesting for the shareholders. For Cutrales, I mean, we don't know much about them, really. They're big in the juice market. They're big in the soybean market. But they haven't really been in, in the bananas business before. What they might get out of it is, as we said, you know, it's the big brand, the roots, the distribution. And you know, when we spoke to them, they said that they're convinced that they can turn it around. We'll have to see if they can. Will the banana wars continue? We'll be watching. Thanks, James. Thank you, Sajid.